All right, time to secure the siding a little better. I've got this mounting tape, double-sided sticky tape. So I'm just going to cut a few strips of that and put it in behind here because the only thing holding it will be the corner trim. They recommend not gluing behind here because with the the wood will contract and expand uh, differently to the metal in the sun and you'll get crinkles in it apparently if you glue it. So it said just to use some sticky tape. This stuff ended up being a real pain in the ass to pull the backing off of. It really stuck to it and even pulled away from the wood before it would come off, so I'm not sure if I'll use it again, but it does seem to stick really well. And it all goes quiet. I'm not quite sure how, because it worked fine on the inside, but it's too short now. I suppose it was the thickness of the wall less on the inside. So I'm going to have to turn them sideways and do a join in the middle. Hopefully it doesn't come out right where the vent it is. It just naturally wants to be like a rounded teardrop shape and it's really making me wish I didn't go so boxy. But, you know, there's always the second one. It's nice, that curve. I'm pretty worried about water getting in, so I might try overhanging this and folding it down a little bit. I've got this piece of scrap metal. I'll just give it a go at bending it. So this is 0.7 millimeters thick. So it's almost tin foil. I actually like how it's come out here. It will be rainproof even without using sealant, so that's a good plus. Of course, I'll still use sealant on it. Well, that kind of worked, but it's ugly and it's not perfectly straight, and that means when I put the trim on and you look up from the bottom, it's not going to be a nice straight line. So I'm going to try sandwiching it in between these two. It's not forming a very sharp edge. It's not quite enough of a bend, but it's a lot tidier than that, which isn't even straight. All right, that looks pretty nice. But then how am I going to cover it where the tape goes over it? Because the whole point is I bought a whole crap ton of these little angle brackets. Of course, I bought them the wrong size, and then I had to go back and buy more in a bigger size to go over like that. Oh dear. I'll figure something out. I'm just cutting the sheet to length and this also shows how strong the camper is. I'm able to kneel up on top of it. Look at this. Oh, you know, even for me. That's like, that's beautiful. That's better than I would have expected. So I ended up spending like two hours researching how to fold metal, annealing metal, and made myself a little bending jig. Okay, please excuse the mess, but here's a little demonstration of how it works. It folds down. A little gap in there, the whole sheet sits in there and then you fold it up and you're left with a 90 degree bend but of course it doesn't work very good it's homemade um, so I'm on the floor kneeling all over it and eventually get a good result I'm just going to slide our piece of metal into here like to start with one end and then you can sort of shimmy it up it down. And bend it. And 
give it the old rocking chair. And this should just slide that off. There we go, a nice bend. So this is just two bits of wood with a aluminium angle and two door hinges. And this is a space set so the uh, door hinges don't stand out more than the bottom. And that's it. All right, so that thing is a piece of crap to use, but it gets the results. The one I've just done, got that nice drip edge overlap there. Oh yes, I'm more confident in the waterproofing of this now. I've cut out the front panel, including the two notch outs for my towing hooks here. And I've just applied some double-sided tape, vertical, so that if any rain or water gets in there, if it was horizontal, it might catch the water, but I'm going to stick it on now. The front is on. Oh, man. Literally took me 10 minutes to peel all the red backing off this tape. It is trash, man. I mean, it holds well, but jeepers, it's, it sticks to this way better than it sticks to the wood. There we go. Oh, that's so much better. Let's cap it with this. Oh, yeah. We're just cutting out around the star window a little uh, flange. So I've made a slit in each corner and then bought some of these. Another $45 gone. But hopefully, that makes it a lot easier. I've just covered the end of the hammer in tape because I don't have a rubber mallet. I'm just making this all up as I go, but this seems to be pretty good. It'll wrap up there and then I'll have my window come, flashing come over like that. So any water that gets inside will come out and down it'll sit over the top of that so the water will just continue dripping down and all the way to the ground i've put flex seal around the water sides of the roof window and i've used a bit of these foam tiles just to squeegee it down in there I'm just faking my way through this here so i've got the angle bracket and this comes on top the sealant tape comes underneath and then on top of this So it's a little bit short because I was trying to use up offcuts and it's a very tricky piece with lots of bends. So I've got a little tile to bend to go and tuck under there. I'm just going to do that for each side. I've got the joints taped up. Not the prettiest, but I think it will be waterproof. As you can hear, maybe. It is starting to rain. Of course, we just got firewood delivered today, so it's all out on the driveway. And it's starting to rain. Anyway, time to pull the tape off. Oh, yes. Nice, but I'm gonna use two hands. I'm using this Eterna Bond stuff. I originally thought it was double-sided tape and I was gonna put it under the seams, but it turns out it's not. It's very good though, very flexible. You can kind of fold it along there and then slice it and fold it around and it seems to seal itself up really well like putty. So I'm just going to wrap this up like a wee present and then if I want to I can trim it off with a bit of that to tidy things up but that'll mean putting more screw holes in and I might just hold off on that for now so I folded the edge down put my cornering over there and marked a line so I don't go over it with the tape and now I'll just place the tape 
along here. It's not going beyond my line. I got my solar panel. It's huge, 150 watts. And I got these little mounting feet, which I'm just putting on now. Just trying to work on getting the roof watertight still. So I've got the seam here. I have put some of the flex seal sealant. And now I'm going along, I've cut that roll in half because it's running short and it's very expensive. Plus my overlap isn't that large here. I'm not too worried about it because the drift edge should work correctly even if the seal fails, but I'm putting this over it anyway. And then as you can see on the other side, a full strip of it there. And then I've got to get some proper sealant to, uh, I think they call it self-leveling sealant or something kind of a gasket maker to put the vent on and go around the feet of the solar panel. I'm getting ready to build the kitchen now. This is one of those things that you can't really plan on paper too much. You have to frame it out, hop in there, see if your feet slide under it all right, and decide what height you're going to build the kitchen bench. Same around the back. When you're standing here, what's a good bench height? I've gone with the same as my workbench. And then it's just a matter of seeing how deep in it's going to go because we're going to have the sink here. This will be the wall and that'll be the internal cupboards accessible from the bed. Just checking the mattress will fit perfectly through the door folder and half like that. So I'm going to take it out so I don't get it dirty because there's going to be more cutting when building the kitchen. But yeah, good to check because that is going to be the last time this back wall is fully opened up like this. Here's the framing. Just got a support here and then it's screwed into the um, framing inside the wall there. Same on the other side. And then this is going to be my tabletop. It seems crazy to me, but at, some, at this point, some people will say, camp is done, put the back wall on. But you're missing out on a great opportunity for a kitchen here. It really uses that back space. Still got the room for your feet underneath. So this is what I'm doing here. Got the sink there. Uh, battery and water tank underneath. The weight is still good. I can actually stand on the back of the trailer and the front, uh, the hitch doesn't come up in the air. So it, it needs that weight at the back a little bit. I know that you need to have some tongue weight to stop fish tailing on the road, but it definitely, it can take my weight. So it definitely needs a little more back here. Here's where I want to put the sink. I've just set it down, trace the outside and then come in 15 millimeters to give it that lip to screw it onto. I'm probably using far too many screws for this, but I'm not going to glue it in case I need to make changes in the future. This is exciting though. Looking pretty cool. I'm going to try cutting this with these now because it's quieter. I actually ended up getting COVID yesterday, so I've been sleeping most of the day. And I'm just going to try and work on this for an hour or two. But uh, yeah, if I can keep the noise down by not using power tools, that should help with how I'm feeling. That's, yeah, that's much more. I'm just using the extra aluminium to make a kitchen bench. It's a bit scratched, which is a bummer because this stuff doesn't come with a peel off thing on it. There's this odd little hole I had to make into the foot area for the sink basin. So not quite sure if I'm going to finish that off yet. We'll figure something out. So the sink is going to go into here. Oops, I suppose it goes that way. And then we've got this trim piece. And that's pretty much the bench. I'm just keeping a nice thick bead so I can squish down and fill in all the spaces. I think this is what they also call a self-leveling sealant because I've got these little transitions to fill in. That's all I've got for this video. Thank you for watching everyone and good luck on your own projects if you're going to be building a teardrop camper. 
In the next video, I'll show how I built the doors and what a pain it was to trim out all the door jams. All right, see ya.